So let's dive into the components of performance. We all have seen this epic video of Ronaldo. Um, I don't know how high this jump was, but his feet must have cleared that defender's head. But power is a big one. So whether it's jumping this high or rocketing a shot from the 50, power is a, a big piece of performance for soccer players. So in order for him to get up this high, leg strength, lower body power, core stability are all needed from a performance plan to be able to do something this dynamic. Now speed, this one I'm asked about the most, especially by players, coaches, and parents. How can my players or how can I gain speed? So we all remember when Robin schooled Ramos and broke the record for linear speed. I think this was back in, it had to have been in 2010 World Cup. And it was just incredible. So something like this, again, is going to require hamstring strength, quad strength, glute strength, core stability, good posture, coordination, aggressive arm swing. So again, all pieces of performance training. And agility, Messi's one of my favorites when we look at this performance component. So being able to cut, juke, fake defenders, change direction quickly, and all of that happens because of also lower body strength. So um, ankle mobility, um, quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes, core, trunk, so all the same muscle groups are playing a role. So as you can see, there's a lot of total body strengthening going on here. And then speed endurance, so being able to sustain high amounts of speed for a long period of time. So this is where we get into our conditioning work. So uh, speed endurance is more anaerobic. So anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds, being able to be blistering fast for a longer period of time. A lot of these actions are game changing. So it could be a transition, a counter attack, a run onto a diagonal ball. Speed endurance is huge for soccer players when it comes to performance. So with all these performance components, how does injury reduction apply here? I'm going to return back to power. So performance component, he's jumping off the ground, he's creating force with leg strength, but how is he landing that jump without twisting an ankle or blowing a knee? So he also needs leg strength. So we need to be training the eccentric or the lengthening action of the hamstrings. I'm going to give you guys some sample movements later. So movements that are going to train both power and the injury reduction component of something like this. Speed. So how is Robin able to run this fast as well as not pull a hamstring? also leg strength. So there's many exercises exercises here where we can ensure he's becoming faster, but he's also reducing chance of injury. Same with agility. How are players able to cut, turn, and change direction quickly without blowing a knee or rolling an ankle? So ACL tears, they're, they're big in soccer. And they're, main, they're mainly caused by a non-contact change of direction or an athlete quickly pumping the brakes and decelerating, then re-accelerating in another direction. So again, it comes back to the same theme. It takes being able to have the leg strength to handle a dynamic movement like that. And then speed endurance ensuring athletes can maintain speed for long periods of time and making sure that they're not fatiguing in the second half. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have players who are slower in the second half and who are more susceptible to injury at that point in the game. And there's a lot of research out there that injuries occur most in the second half. So we want to make sure we're, we're training them to be able to handle that.